Welcome to True Colors, Go Comedy's LGBTQ uh, improv show. My name is Scotty Myers. I'm your host for today's episode, and we are very excited uh, to welcome Chris as a party from Between the Lines as our guest this week. If you are just tuning in, and this is the first time you've watched us, we are all LGBTQ improvisers, and we're part of the Go Comedy, Comedy resident, uh, resident artist. And we have been doing this show for about two years, and recently we started uh, partnering with Between the, Not, Between the Lines newspaper, which is Mich Michigan's largest LGBTQ publication. Um, and then uh, last week, our last, uh, our last episode was our first episode that we went digital, um, and we're back for episode two, or show two. I don't know whether we'll call this episode, <laughs> but we're back. So uh, with that, uh, welcome. We're glad you're here. And uh, like I said, my name is Scotty Myers, and I'm going to introduce our cast who's here to perform with us tonight. Uh, so here we go. Hi, I'm Tess Hanna. Hi, Tess. Hi, I'm Gary Lehman. Gary. Hi, I'm Chris Morton. Chris. Hi, I'm Heidi Sherrick. Hi, Heidi. Uh, and we are going to watch together uh, the interview that I did earlier this week with Chris as a party. And then we will come back and discuss the things um, out of each video segment, uh, each interview segment. We'll discuss them, and then we're going to do some improvised scenes. Um, so here it is, our first yep. interview segment. Welcome, Chris. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Scott. Thanks for having me. Hi, everybody yeah. in the virtual world. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So, thank you so much for doing this and joining us this uh, for this episode. Um, my very first question to you is just about you. Um, you are the entertainment writer um, for Between the Lines, and you have interviewed so many amazing people. So why don't you tell, uh, tell us how you found your way to Between the Lines? Um, and about, um, you also do, um, I think you're the editor for uh, Q Syndicate. So um, tell us about that as well. Uh, I used to read Between the Lines as a student. Um, that I didn't really, I wasn't in the know about the news. I cared about pop culture. I cared about entertainment. I sort of found my in um, for politics and hot button issues go through reading about pop culture through um, what, uh, through the celebrity lens. And I kind of got really involved in what they were saying. And then I, I realized how important these issues were. At the same time, I was writing for the student paper at Eastern called Eastern Echo. Um, I built up a profile for myself and um, I was ready to take the next step, which was right for Between the Lines. So as I was finishing school, I sent my clips over to Jan and Susan, who are the publishers of Between the Lines. Uh, we met at Panera. We had lunch. Oh. Um, I got um, a, a job and I started working for them. Uh, they ended up, they, they own Q Syndicate. Um, Q Syndicate's been around for over 20 years. Uh, they took it over, um, my job transitioned, and there was no celebrity platform, there were no celebrities inter celebrity interviews for LGBTQ regional press, and I thought that it was something that um, I loved reading when I was a college student, and I thought this would be something that maybe regional press would be interested in. And we had this platform, we have a massive circulation, a lot of reach, um, over 30 publications in the United States, and um, publicists started to realize that this was uh, legitimate. So I started to get bigger names and bigger names, and then I got Beyonce, and then everything after Beyonce it was easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you get Beyonce. I mean, like, where, you know, it's like here, you know? That's awesome. I, I, well, no, it's a, it was a high bar, right? Um, right. <laughs> um, you've interviewed from uh, Beyonce to Cher, uh, Dolly Parton, Anna Gasteyer, Amy Poehler, and Rachel Dratch, <clears throat> Bianca Del Toro. Just you just go through the list of gay icons, and you pretty much covered them all. Um, who is your who's someone that is your favorite that you've interviewed so far? Someone that stands out. I mean, I have a long list of favorites um and you know Meryl Streep is up there I mean some of these people are pe it's the people that I idolized and I admired 
for their work when I was the kid. Um, and so, you know, Meryl is on that list and Cher is on that list because she's Cher and right. she is our goddess. And she got me through a lot as a, as a gay kid. Um, she made me feel better about myself, um, which leads me into the person right behind me, actually. Here's a visual aid for you. Can you see that, Scott? Uh, that's I, yes. Mariah. Mariah Carey. Carey. Ah. I feel like that was honestly the holy grail. My whole life was kind of leading up to this moment. In fact, I just wrote a whole op-ed for the New York Times about, um, about my relationship with Mariah as a gay boy growing up with nobody to look up to. She's not gay, by the way. Mariah is right. not gay. But <laughs> she, I felt like we were sort of kindred spirits. She always identified as somebody felt, who felt different because she was biracial, and I connected with with that feeling. And I thought, well, I feel different too. I'm not biracial, but I was queer. And um, I never thought in a million years that I would be able to get on the phone with her. Um, it was the most surreal day. I couldn't think about anything else, but just how is this gonna go? Is this actually happening? And then it actually happened. And, um, and she, she said my name. I remember <laughs> distinctly <laughs> getting on the phone and saying, hi, Mariah. And she said, hi, Chris. And I go, my head wanted to explode, Scott. You don't even know. It wanted to explode. Um, so, you know, she's, she's, she's at the top of the list because, you know, I, don't, I know that a lot of people can't say that they get to interview their childhood idol or get to talk to their, idol, their childhood idol. But it was really more than that. I got to actually express to her um, all of what I'm telling you. I get to actually tell her that I probably wouldn't have been this person right now if I didn't grow up with her in my life. That was special. Uh, we are back from that first uh, segment of uh, our interview with Chris as a party. Um, I, it's kind of cool. He gets to he got to um, to talk with his childhood idol. I I thought that that was pretty cool. Um, you know, I mean, Mariah Carey of all people, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, like, I guess this is not a, a Mariah Carey group. <laughs> I guess not. Good. Oh, God. So cool. And I love that what really just like pushed him over the top, you know, his whole childhood, he, well, her message resonated with him. And then she said his name and he was right. like, <laughs> so cute. Right. right. I thought that that was kind of cool too. I thought like, you know, the idea of, someone you've idolized for forever or that you've been like, like your personal hero being like, hi, Scott. I mean, like, I thought that was kind of cool. I know. You know? It was very <laughs> sensual, Scotty. Oh, hey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, ever... I don't know. <clears throat> I, I don't know how he did it because uh, just this last fall, I was able to see Carol Burnett in, uh, she was in Detroit and she was my uh, idol growing up and like, I wasn't even close to the stage and I had heart palpitation. Like I was so nervous just walking into the same building with her. And so to be able to like have dialogue or to like do my job and conduct an interview, I would be out, it would be an out of body experience. Yeah. Honestly, when he was talking about it, I'm like, I hear you, dude. Like if, if somebody like to say my name, like, if, like at, at the end when she tugged her ear, I'm like, that was totally to me. I know that was to me, even though it was an auditorium. Yeah. Right. Uh, all this talks about, talk about uh, meeting your idol, having them say your name and all that makes me think it's time for a scene. So let's see a scene, guys. Uh, take it away. I, 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 I,
and never She's be able back. to get <sighs> Oh, hey, y'all. Sorry, I was doing a little bit back there when you could see my voice, but not hear me. <laughs> oh. Oh, how are y'all doing? Welcome to oh. Dolly Land. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't know quite how to pass that. Would Would you two like to to uh, get some commemorative breasts like mine? Or I love riding your breasts. I mean, coasters. Ah, uh, oh yeah, Breast Mountain. It's one of our favorite attractions down here, y'all. The second oh. one's my favorite. Oh, Lefty. Oh, she's treated me right over the years. <laughs> I eat your breasts every morning for breakfast all through middle school. I, I mean, oh. I, I mean, I listen to your songs. I, oh, I thought you meant the old English muffins I made. Dolly's <laughs> breast muffins. Those I things sold every, like hotcakes. Every pet I've ever had is named Jolene. Oh, fun fact. So am I. <laughs> Why not? We got something in common, don't we? Oh, oh, oh my God. You have something more in common I've with Dolly than me. What? Oh, oh. Well, no, it, it's all right, little miss. What, what, what's your name? Evelyn. Evelyn Pritchard. <laughs> Evelyn Pritchard? Oh, well, you know what? Well, you look like uh, you look like a little Jolene to me, if I can just say that. Oh, my God! She said I look like Jolene! It's, well, the... I, are you all okay? I'm sorry. Uh, security, can we we need to get? I think no, they're no, having Dolly, a, no, we we aren't here to no, hurt you. We no. we okay. Well, that was sounds like you're here to hurt me. Uh, security, okay, okay. Uh, security. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, oh, yeah. You you kids, back away from Dolly. Back away. We're the biggest fans. Yeah. All right, Jolene, you got to kick him out of here. Wait, do you call everyone Jolene? Security guard, his name is Jolene. I only know one name, y'all. I think my name's Jolene. What? Yeah, I, I, I understand that Dolly Parton is what people call me, but I think I'm Jolene. How are you doing, Jolene? Jolene, get these Jolenes out of here. Jolene. They, they're questioning whether my name is Jolene or not. I'm yeah, about ready to pick you up by your earlobes, you little... Get out of here. Okay, okay. What are you okay. staring at? Why are you still here? Get off this property. Get out of here, Joe Lanes. Get out, out of here. Oh. My. Oh. oh. I'm sorry about that, Dolly. Oh, I'm sorry about, no, don't, please. Call me Joe Lane. Lane. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> uh, oh, little Joe Lane. <laughs> Man, if I, I knew any other Dolly Parton sings, uh, songs, I, I was really going to start feeding you, but I... <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Well, um, uh, with that, let's, uh, let's uh, turn our attention to our uh, next segment uh, with Chris as a party, and here we go. So let's talk about uh, the current issues. So you, um, we're recording this on May 11th, and um, the most recent issue that came out was, I think, May 7th. Um, and you wrote a story on a Netflix documentary um, called uh, Circus of Books that goes into the history of a bookstore in West Hollywood uh, that is, became iconic and a place of meeting and uh, basically a place where, where gay, uh, gay folks in the 70s, 80s could find a place, uh, basically a, a home. And uh, the crazy thing about this video, about the, the documentary, they talk about the owners of the documentary, the Masons, um, the Mason family. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the, the story that you wrote and about that uh, circus of books? Yeah, I don't think that you ever expect two straight religious conservative people who are over the age of 50 nope. to own a bookstore that sells gay porn. And yet, um, Barry and Karen Mason, the owners of Circus of Books, um, did for over 35 years. And it is gay history. Um, it is also, it was also, like you said, a safe place for people to connect in a way um, and because before before we had Grinder or Scruff or other ways to meet LGBTQ people, um, this is how queer people met, right? In public spaces where it was safe for them to meet. And right. so Circus of Books was that person. And 
it documents not only Barry and Karen's journey to owning this bookstore, but um, beyond that, it um, revolves around how they uh, became surrogate parents to gay people who were dying of AIDS in the 80s. Um, sort of dis despite Karen's religious affiliations, because she goes through a change, and I don't want to give too much away, um, but you'll kind of see that in the documentary. The real kicker is that the documentary is made by Rachel Mason, a filmmaker and artist who lives in LA, who is their daughter. <laughs> right. so just imagine Scott, <laughs> your parents own a gay porn store and you're documenting that. Uh, uh, we're back uh, from that segment. Um, I, I can, uh, like my parents, they would not own a gay book, so <laughs> I can't imagine uh, that. Like, it's so it's so strange. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I right. did not have a circus of books growing up, but um, I remember when I was a teen, I would go to Borders Bookstore, and there was an alternative lifestyles like aisle. And I would um, stand there and read a lot of books and felt like this aisle, I might meet someone here. And it wasn't like, it wasn't like a grinder replacement or anything. Cause right. I wasn't, I wasn't cruising. I w it was 14. And, um, but I was just like, well, only very interesting people will be reading these books. So if I ever come here and someone very interesting is in this aisle, I will obviously meet a queer friend. Um, right. But yeah, it, I, I think, never considered uh, Yeah, and hold on to that thought because the next uh, segment is going to be more about that. Uh, but um, I think it was it was fascinating that like, have any of you guys has anyone seen this this documentary? No. no okay. It's, uh, it's recommended pretty heavily on, on Netflix. See, yeah, it is. It's great. And at one point, uh, it's fascinating because the the daughter, Rachel, who films the does the film in the documentary, we learned that she finds out that her parents had the gay bookstore from her friend. <laughs> like, like her friend in high school was like, uh, what do your parents do? And she's like, oh, they have a bookstore. And he was like, what's the name? And she goes, Circus of Books. And he, it's like that's a porn shop. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, um, like growing up, I was in the UP. You would think very removed, uh, but there was literally a chain of bookstores in the UP called Sensual Arts. And there's three of them, and one of them was in my hometown. You had to be 18 to get in. I mean, this is like a porn store. Right. Um, I remember when a bunch of us turned 18, it was like, ooh, let's go to the porn store. And they, <laughs> they, had, um, they had all the little quarter movie booths. Uh, you'd put a quarter in and it would play like a certain set number of minutes of this porn and every booth had a different number. And I remember I would go in and I'm like, why are there holes in the wall? This place <laughs> is very strange. Uh, <laughs> No one's fixed these very obvious large holes. <laughs> uh, so had no idea, no idea. Just imagine if uh, your parents were the ones running that. Yeah. Oh, you'd I, be disappointed well, the, that they weren't they were, doing handyman. <laughs> yeah, well. Right. I, well, I think that this sounds like a scene. So let's see a scene uh, based on these things and go. Welcome. You got your IDs. Oh, hey, yeah. Uh, um, <clears throat> yeah, no, I got them right here. Yep, this is here. Here's here's my ID. I'm excited to be here again, as I have before. Yeah. Excuse me. Yes. I'm the only person that works here. I've never seen you before. Yes, thank you. I used to have a shorter mustache, so I'll just be over here. Sorry, yeah. I didn't. Sorry, excuse me. I didn't see what he handed you. I oh, so, sorry. Excuse me. So, sorry, sir. Uh, okay, no, don't mind me. I'll just be over here minding my own business. So just he's going to be over by the booths. 
Um, yeah, the uh, ladies. Uh... Yeah, I just I love the name Miss Kitties. I just didn't know for sure. Um, I thought that maybe a... it was a pet store. It's so dark in here. I. Um, yeah, the names the I... names are double entendre. Uh, um, we don't have any pets. Uh, hey, I we can't find any of your pets. Where do you keep the lizards? Oh, there's some doors in the back. Just all right, I'll just go in through those without looking in first. They're all cages and they all have uh, air holes. Yeah, Sorry. So, no, that's fine. I'm, uh, my eyes are just adjusting and I- Yeah, it's I a little dark. That's, um, whoa. Uh, <laughs> uh, those are suckers or pencil toppers or- well, Hold those, on. Those, there's no, there's no animals in those cages. There's just people with their things. Their things. Yeah. Everyone They're... has things. And back there, you can see the things. So go back. That's why you're here. Oh, uh, uh, I thought yeah. I was going to um, get a macabre, but all, all right. Is he referring to like These the over things? Here. Things? Like uh, the pencil toppers yeah. or the suckers? Um, well, see the suckers that are shaped like penises? Uh, yeah. Yes. Um, uh, if you go in the back, um, you will find bigger ones. Um, Raul, we need cleanup in booth two again. God damn it. I'm sorry. I can't be held responsible for what happens when I'm watching it. Fine. Uh, you, oh, you, you can't. Go, uh, excuse me. I have to go you're, clean you're, a booth with my tongue. Your zipper, your zipper is down. Your pants, you don't. Oh. That back oh. room wasn't what I expected, but oh, I don't think I want to get a monkey anymore. I'm just going to stay here forever. Bing! That was literally the, 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 that was literally the, the crazy, scary dude that worked at Central Arts. <laughs> oh, there you go. Very, very lifelike, I guess. <laughs> yeah. No matter when you went, he always was working. <laughs> <laughs> Which I guess uh, means I met, I went more than once. He loved his job. Yeah, imagine that. <laughs> uh, well, with that, uh, let's continue our trek into gay bookstores uh, with this next uh, in segment of the interview. Um, I, uh, I watched the video last night. I watched the documentary and, um, I, like this is sort of a plug for that documentary. It's amazing. Like, I bet you didn't expect to cry. Did you? <laughs> no. And it, I, you know, it's, it's like, uh, it is such an interesting connection to, um, that sort of part of gay history, because I remember for myself, like, uh, without getting into too much background, I moved to Michigan essentially uh, to, uh, to avoid being gay. I moved into a house with a whole bunch of, of Christian guys from my Christian fellowship from, from college, and I was gonna escape being gay. And then I, f and then I found that I couldn't, <laughs> right? Yeah, it and, doesn't happen, um, does it? <laughs> you it, can keep it, trying. It, <laughs> imagine that. Um, but one of the, but one of the places where you know you would you know I knew as a kid like I would go to Barnes and Noble or to Walden Books back in the day and I would go to that gay section and there was so much there that like I felt like I could connect to and then there were gay bookstores still around back back when I moved to Michigan and you like it was like oh my gosh there are people who are like me in these books that are written about them and like that sort of we've kind of lost that connection now and so it's really an interesting documentary about that time period in history yeah it's interesting you bring that up i remember also going to walden books and b dalton um, b dalton you know, oh b. Dalton. yeah yes. and um, you know what i did and i tell this story i've told it to a couple of friends but i would go to well actually barnes and noble i would go with my mom sometimes and we would get uh, like a tea or coffee and we would walk around but we would always separate and she would do her own thing and I would do my own thing. And I would always, yes. end up, I would end up in the photography section and I would go there because I could find uh, like black and white photography books of nude males. 
Um, and I was a teenager and so I'd take the book and then I would get like a Van Gogh art book or a Picasso art book and it would slip the nude male book inside the Picasso book and nobody had to know but me. Oh my God. <laughs> we, this is, this is like, we have yeah. shared experiences like yeah. this totally, absolutely. And you would go like, I remember there's also like the self-help section and yeah. there'd be like uh, books on like gay sex that would be in like the, the self-help section at B. Dalton in the mall. Yeah. Like my, my mom would go to, I grew up in Western Pennsylvania. There's a store called Hills, which is basically like, uh, oh God, I don't know, like a Target or whatever back then. Yeah. And, and like they would go there and then I would go to the bookstore and I'd find my way to the same sections. Yeah. I feel so, like I'm... I missed out on an entire section of uh, gay material in the self-help section. Self-help section, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it, it is so, and the, the video is so amazing because it also talks about, you know, their son, Josh, coming out to them too, which yeah. you, would, you would have thought that, uh, that they run a gay bookstore and it would have just been like, ah, our son's gay, whatever. But just the fact that that wasn't what you expected, you, the, like there was the, this disconnect between what they were selling and what their private life was too. It's so fascinating. Yeah, I was really, you know, Karen, I was really interested in her as a person and which is why I talked to Rachel when I interviewed her for the story. Um, I talked a lot about her mom um, because I picked up, you know, there's a lot, she's a complex woman um, and, that really, that bookstore for her was really strictly business. I mean, she couldn't even look at the dildos on the wall, right? right. But right. she knew, she knew, oh, dildos are something gay people like. <laughs> yes. She just couldn't look at them. <laughs> and so I just thought, okay, so this was a business for her, right? And her daughter admits like she was kind of offended and by her mom's reaction to some of the material. Um, so it explains why she struggled with knowing that her son Josh was gay. Right. Um, but right. and that was kind of the part that really hit me it was like that though the moments of like their family connection and what you know what that meant beyond just the bookstore. But there's just it's such a great documentary. So you everybody needs to go watch that. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I second that opinion. Absolutely. And we're back out of that. Um, so we that ties into what we Tess, what you were kind of talking about before, um, the whole, right. like, you... Yeah, I blew it. Sorry. <laughs> no, you didn't blow it. It's great. Uh, you were going where we were all going to go. So you were ahead yeah. of me. Yeah. Now, uh, I didn't know there was um, potential for sex books in the self-help section either. So I feel like I missed out if I could go back. But I remember one of these books I would look at every time because I was a teenage perv was um, just this pink, huge, thick book called The Lesbian Sex Book. But there weren't photographs. Everything was like um, pencil illustrations. And I would flip through and be like, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. oh, I, oh, I will go there. Yes, I'll be doing this. Um, which is hilarious because it was not cartoonish. It wasn't like it was but it was pencil drawings. And I was like, why? Yeah, if that's all you can get, it's very erotic. <laughs> it's sort of like, yeah, it's sort of like, you know, pictures, eh, but we'll draw, but we'll draw notes. Okay. That's, uh, well, I mean, Instagram is like that. Like you can't, you can't show a picture of a penis, but you can show a drawing of one. On oh, Instagram. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, the, the line. So again, grew up in a small town, had a porn shop, but didn't have a bookstore. <laughs> uh, so every time we would go to a department store, I would not be looking at books. I would be shopping for underwear. Yep. Um, because <laughs> the pictures on the underwear cartons yes. were yes. very, oh. very erotic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially the ones that had like the bikini briefs. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, I was very nerdy in how I would like secretly look at uh, the male form because like I loved like I still love Greek mythology uh, but especially like middle school uh, I would read a lot of Greek mythology and like high school too 
Uh, and if you ever look at like sculptures and stuff of Greek myth, it's nothing but perfect male bodies yeah. <laughs> with uh, also some gratuitous nudity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to see a scene based on these things that we've just talked about. <laughs> uh, so go for it, guys. Let's see a scene. Oh, you're you're in here. You're I, in this section too. Y yes, I'm. I'm looking for poetry. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, I'm looking for tanks of World War II. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's not very alternative. No, I guess we're both here yeah. on accident. Yeah. There's, there's a lot here, though, that looks right. good. Uh, yeah, there's a lot, a lot in here. A um, lot. Uh, nothing about World War II tanks, uh, but maybe there's something <gasps> worth checking out. Yeah, I, oh. don't, mind, don't mind me, I'm just looking for a book around where you're standing. Oh, oh sorry. That's, that's okay. Uh, it's are okay, you, I'm just going to stand back here. And oh. Are you in the wrong section too? No. We're both. Oh. We didn't even know this section existed. <laughs> no, we, no. New, new no. to us. New to us, yeah. Is it new to the store? Is this a new section that just got added? I don't think no, this it's, is here. It's always been here. I'm just going to lurk back here and just oh. watch. Okay. Oh. Um, well, I guess I'll just go over to the World War II tank section then. Are you looking for bazookas? No, just tanks, sir. I'm, I'm good. Um, I, I need to go find the poems of Emily Dickinson. I oh, no. don't seen <laughs> Emily Dickinson. <laughs> I was um, almost going to quote her, and then I was like, nah. <laughs> I, yeah, me too, <laughs> from all of my Emily Dickinson quotes I have. <laughs> I was going to say, that would be impressive, Gary. I, I do not know any. I feel like, though, I feel like I should know some Emily Dickinson, right? You've heard some. You I'm have. Sure, I have. Yeah, we must like secretly know one. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go to our last segment uh, with our interview with Chris as a party. Here we go. What's next? Like, what do you have coming up? You have this story in uh, the New yeah. York Times. Is that out yet, or is that so? Oh, yeah. Um, so the New York Times piece came out about I don't know two months ago. Two okay. Ago, maybe longer. I don't know time anymore, Scott. I've lost track. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, but you know, it was about it, it was about a month before um, we were forced into quarantine, and I will say, like, it's interesting. I've been thinking about that piece because a lot of that piece is about finding home in something that is um, metaphorical or, or figur figurative. Um, and for me, I found home in Mariah in a lot of ways. And I've realized that I, as I've gotten older. Uh, escaping into her music is a way for me to feel like I'm okay, uh, no matter what the situation. And now that I find myself having to deal with what we're all kind of dealing with in some way, um, it's especially relevant. And I hadn't known that when I wrote it. Mm. So, um, but yeah, so I did that a few months ago. And this week, um, you know, Between the Lines has an issue coming out this Thursday. Mm -hmm. And I interviewed Patty Lapone. Oh yes, a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're a yep, you're Patty Lapone guy. Um, yep. Yeah. So Patty Lapone is in the new Netflix Ryan Murphy production Hollywood. And um, in fact, here this is me. That is what it will look like in color. Okay. I, I was editing the um, proofs today. Oh, great. So, yeah. Um, so that interview will be in this week's issue. I am, I have an interview at five o'clock today with uh, Janelle Monet. Okay. Who is... Very um, cool. Yeah, who's coming. She's, she's the star of a new Amazon series. Not a new Amazon series. The second season of an Amazon series that premiered last year called Homecoming that starred Julia Roberts. So I have her today. And then I have, um, I have Tori Amos next week. She has a book called Resistance that I'm currently reading, and we're going to connect, I think, uh, middle of next week. Yeah. 
Um, is there anyone that you uh, really want to interview that you haven't had a chance to yet? Yes, there's still a handful of people, even though I've been doing this for longer than I thought I would. <laughs> it's been like 10 years. And, um, but yes, you know, so growing up, I was a huge fan of Sandra Bullock. So um, I still want to talk to Sandy. Sandy, if you're out there and you hear this, call me. <laughs> um, uh, Oprah and uh, Betty White. Oh my God, Betty White. You know, uh, I, I've always, I mean, who doesn't want to talk to Betty White? Um, well, that's all the time we have to for our interview today, Chris. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So, Betty White, right? So adorable. I'm, yeah. Adorable. I mean, someone's got to, some gay person has got to interview her before it's too late, right? Yeah. It Those seems like you have forever, but probably not. No. What was that? It seems like you'd have forever because she's been around for so right. long. It's like, yeah, we'll just do it tomorrow. Just this week, I went up and I looked up a picture of her and she is looking, she still looks good for 98 years old. She's 98? She is 98. She was huh. born in 1922. Oh. Yeah. All right. Because I was going to make a joke, like, she's been, like, the role that, like, most people know her for first was her being an old woman, and that was 40 years ago? When was the Golden Girls? Oh, 60 God, years Chris. ago? <laughs> All right. Shut up, everybody. Shut up. <laughs> 1984, Chris. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wasn't born yet. Wait. Well, what? she had... She was known first for Mary Tyler Moore show. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Seventies. Yeah. Well, it was funny. He, he was going through like a list of people that he like. I, on Tuesday, I've got this celebrity. On Wednesday, I've got this celebrity, and then and I was like, it was just like going like a hairdresser going through their list of I got Barbara, and then I've got <laughs> Nancy. Um, His job is so cool. Yeah. Um, right. and I. I thought it was really sincerely, it was so beautiful when he said that like Mariah felt like home to him. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, that's like, just, that's beautiful. And I think that we all need some of that comfort right now. Mm -hmm. So I love that he's been able to find that in one of his childhood idols and some of his recent work. So that's just, it's a really nice, cool thing. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I like that, that idea for a scene. So let's uh, see a scene based on those things. Here we go. The, the bunny told me that it, it found its figurative home with, with me. That's why I brought it in. Yeah, I know, I know. They all speak to you. So, so it's Bring okay. It Bring it in. <gasps> Fine. Oh my, oh my God, Fine. Auntie Ethel, you are the nicest over 50 year old that I know. I'm so okay. glad that I have you. I mean, right. it, well, I'm it, not over 50. I'm, I'm 50. That's, I'm just 50. Not yeah, over. But, but the banner said over the hill when it was your birthday party. That was so funny. <laughs> What's the bunny's name? Um, well, I'll have the bunny tell you. Okay. 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 Uh -huh. Mr. Jingles. Oh. Okay, nice to meet you. So glad you found a, a kindred spirit in the woods. Auntie Ethel, Auntie Ethel. Oh, uh-huh. Hi. Hi. Oh, Hi. I have to do a book report on ancient history, so I came running right over here to see you. Uh, I, yeah. I, I was, I was born in 1970. That's, that's not that long wow, ago. Wow, that's yeah. so long ago. No. You must be over 50 then. Just 50. I'm, I just turned 50. Oh, because the banner oh. says over the hill, so. Josh, your kitty's going to scare. I'm taking Mr. Jekyll back outside. Your kitty's going to scare him. Oh, you no. know, in bunny years, oh. your aunt is really old. No. I, bunnies don't have years that are, are akin to human years. That's that's fake. That's not a thing. Oh, that's the kind of ancient sage wisdom I'd expect from you, Auntie Ethel. Oh, what no, you, wait. Mary, come back with Mr. Bojangles. I think we can learn a lot. We, she'll bring another animal back soon. <gasps> Look at the squirrel. Oh, oh. Oh. Hey, it's okay. 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 Hey. Look at the 
squirrel that said that I was like a figur figurative home for, I don't know if it's a her or him, Auntie Ethel. Is it, it a her or him? It's a boy. It's a boy. Just, huh. just stop. Huh. The name so is cool. Axel. All right. Call oh. me Axel. Did you hear him? And he wants to be called Axel. That's like one of those musical. Oh my gosh. Look at him. Look at him doing oh. that dance. If I was bigger, I'd tell you to stop. But since you're waving me in front of that old woman, oh, okay. I like grannies. I really like grannies. I, Auntie Ethel, Axel has a crush on you. Well, I'm I'm not a grandma. I'm just an I'm just an aunt. So you know. I just I, mean I like I like I like nuts that have been stored a long time because they taste better and they know what they want. <laughs> 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 <sighs> Making fun of old people. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was the Golden Girls. That was the show. That was the show. That for the team, Tess, because I'm usually the old lady. <laughs> no, so I, I, I appreciate that. Oh. Uh, well, guys, on that note, that's, that's all the time we have for our show this week. Um, oh. Ended on Squirrel Nuts. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh well thank you guys so much for uh for joining us uh out there in the audience thank you for watching uh whether you're home at work at uh hopefully you're not driving or anything like that but we thank <laughs> you for joining us uh for uh true colors between the lines i'm scotty myers and let's uh review our cast again tess Harry. Chris. Oh, and Finn. Heidi. <laughs> and I'm and I'm Scotty. Thank you so much for joining us. And we will see you on our next uh, episode. They, oh, and also I can't stop can't say this. Thank you to Chris as a party from yes. between. Oh, thank you, Chris. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Uh, they were fantastic. And I we do recommend going and watching that video, uh, that documentary. It is fantastic. Uh, so thanks again. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.